Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful princess in a faraway land. She had long flowing hair, skin as white and pure as freshly fallen snow. But this princess was doomed. She was forced to sleep for a hundred years until awakened by her Prince Charming. Well, a hundred years is a very long time to be in a state of slumber with no apparent signs of aging. But Sleeping Beauty slept quietly, patiently, helplessly, waiting for Prince Charming to set her life back into motion. Thankfully, Prince Charming, using Google Maps on his newly purchased smartphone, navigated to her position, laid that slight, delicate kiss on her cheek, and awakened her to live happily ever after. Now, you may know this tale or similar tales, because growing up, we all enjoy listening to these folk tales. As a child, and yes, contrary to common belief, I was once upon a time a child. We are fascinated by the magic and the wonder that these stories bring us. As a child, I read and reread these tales without giving them a second thought, a deeper thought, without going beyond the magic. We love these tales because they allow us to fantasize. They give us an appointment with our imagination where we can dream, hope, and create our own unique inner reality. But what if they don't? Because sometimes they won't. As a second grade teacher for nearly 20 years, I had ample time to re-examine these fairy tales through an adult lens. What I noticed was that the inconspicuous messages hidden between the lines that often escaped us as children became very apparent under an adult microscope. The very familiar plot, the usual suspects, a damsel in distress, unable to map out her own destiny, lay in wait until a prince, a beast, or a fairy magically arrived to save the day. These implications are rooted in our psyche early on. They creep into our subconscious surreptitiously without us even knowing it. And they set certain boundaries for us that we use to navigate life, especially with respect to gender roles and stereotypes. The covert messages delicately woven into the fabric of these tales are ever present in our everyday lives and guide us through our moments. They set for us unrealistic expectations and unrealistic outcomes. Have you ever wondered if Sleeping Beauty and her prince ever argued? Or what would have happened if Prince Charming did not come to wake her? Would she still be sleeping? Or what is happily ever after? And how do we find the yellow brick road that leads us there? Well, reality is that not all of us will get to live out our unique fantasy. Not all of us will be a rescuer or a princess being rescued. Not all of us are blessed with conventional beauty or long flowing hair or that perfectly shaped hourglass body. And yet, 
we need to go through life guided by these precepts. We're not guaranteed that perfect heroic moment where we showcase ourselves as superstars. Repeatedly, the one-sided portrayal of female characters in these tales renders them as flat, one-dimensional figures with very limited resources. Similarly, the male characters are typically bold, active, dynamic, very much in control. They are the movers and shakers. These normative characteristics and attributes determine the behavior of the players. We know that children are influenced by the stories they read. They absorb the information and use that information to create meaning of their world. They're young, they're impressionable, and they are guided by these precepts. They are not aware of characters that are represented as unequals. But they must still navigate to their happy place. Well, the good news is that contemporary filmmakers, children's authors, uh, even our drumette band comprised of all females are breaking stereotypes. They are challenging conventional uh, ways that we perceive females and males and giving us new, fresh alternatives. Animated films such as Brave and Mulan demonstrate female characters in a very active, very prominent, profound role. Children's authors such as Robert Munch, who wrote the Princess Bag, uh, Princess, uh, uh, sorry, Paper Bag Princess in 1980, also showed a female character in not a so conventional format. And the story goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess named Elizabeth, who was madly in love with her prince, Ronald. One day, a fierce, fire-breathing dragon ambled into the castle and with his fiery breath set everything ablaze, including Elizabeth's clothes. He then grabbed the prince and whisked him back to his cave. Well, Elizabeth springing out of her inactive stereotypical role, found a paper bag, slipped it over her body, and bolted into action to rescue her prince. When she got to the cave, she wittingly outsmarted the dragon, causing him to fall fast asleep. She then tiptoed into the cave, spotted her prince, and was ready to rescue him when Prince Ronald turned to her and said, Ew, Elizabeth, you look awful. Your hair is a mess. Your body is covered with soot and ash, and you have a paper bag for a dress. You don't look like a princess. You look like a bum. Elizabeth, taken aback, bewildered, thought for a moment, and replied, Yeah, Chahaskata. <laughs> Ronald, you look wonderful. Your hair is well-groomed. 
Your clothes are clean and spiffy. You've got your royal crown on your head. You look like a prince, but you are a bum. And she skipped happily into her happily ever after. Now, this is not to say that one tale is right or wrong, but it's simply to shed light on the fact that we have alternatives. As humans, we have the superpower to choose the shoe that fits. Slight allusion to Cinderella. We have the potential to write our own stories. We are not bound to any script, nor are we at the mercy of a storyteller's narrative or an author's pen. Unlike Sleeping Beauty, we have a choice. We have a choice to write our destiny and to take responsibility for our happily ever after. Who will be the dynamic character to write your story? Thank you.